Hi again, everyone. I'm Steve Staples, chairperson of PeaceQuest. And today we're talking about some new youth uh, initiatives with Vanessa Lantain, who's the national coordinator of the Voice of Women. Vanessa, I've been following your work now for a while, and I'm so excited to have been able to, to catch up with you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, no, thank you, Stephen. It's great to be here. On your LinkedIn the other day, you said you were part of this new youth organization called Youth Fusion, and it's Connect to Abolition 2000, which is a group I know very well from many years ago, but it's just really neat. So what's happening with Youth Youth Fusion, What's uh, what, what drew you to it? I was really excited and honored to be asked to speak at the launch event because I feel like this is exactly what we need right now. Uh, so the new youth uh, working group will be trying to look at uh, all of the different intersections of all of the different problems that we have because we're learning now that you cannot look at climate change uh, without disarmament. Uh, or you can't look at uh, food and water security without women's empowerment and human rights. So the working group, um, I'm so excited, will be bringing youth together from around the world to work on these issues in an intersectional way. You know, I'm really interested in this idea of intersectionality. I hear it mentioned from time to time, but can you give me an example or maybe explain a little bit more of what's meant by intersectionality? Sometimes problems have uh, different aspects that we, we might not think about. So one of them, which I'm really interested in, is the intersection of uh, disarmament, peace, climate change, and women's rights. So things that maybe we might not look at, but uh, you know we know and, and we understand at the Canadian Voice of Women for Peace that uh, within NATO countries, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization countries, they are the largest institutional emitter of carbon. Mm -hmm. And so when we're looking and advocating for demilitarization, we understand that when the military, uh, which is exempt from reporting, lowers their carbon emissions, we're going to be able to reach those carbon targets better. And if we can keep uh, carbon from getting into the atmosphere, that means that climate change will be slowed down and people in countries that are prone to desertification will be better off. And when you can keep water in the ground and you can have fertile soil because of that water and you can have better crop yields, that means that women and girls will have more time because they won't be having to walk so far for water or um, they'll be able to have better crop yields, which means the family will be able to go to market and sell some of that product, meaning that they will have more income to send the girl to school, which we know um, is key to empowerment and financial security for women and girls. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you do work for Voice of Women for Peace. You're the national coordinator. What's what's your story? What's your one minute? Can you tell me in a one minute story? Like how how did you get to be the national coordinator of the Voice of Women for Peace, and 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 why do you like it so much? I saw the position come up um, when I was looking for work, and I uh, um, sent in my sent in my uh, application, but then. I didn't get a response back for a couple days and so I sent in another email and I said, you know, <laughs> if, if I don't get the job, I'm okay with that, but I still want to be involved. I still want to volunteer because I, I really believe in what um, the Canadian Voice of Women for Peace is doing. And with that, um, they sent me an email back. They said, okay, that's great. We have, um, we're doing a peace walk next week. We would love for you to help out there. So then I was able to meet the acting national coordinator, who's now the Ontario coordinator, um, uh, Melissa, and uh, we did the peace walk around Toronto. Wow. And the next week we had the interview and uh, ended up getting the job, which is, which was just been, um, it's just been quite, uh, quite, quite a ride, but I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. Vanessa, that sounds fantastic. Thanks so much for making time today.